to ask a question and Charlie felt a brief flare of impatient. Now the world, now the whole class would have to stop while Trinwell went back to explain a couple of concepts. Charlie let her mind wander, sketching obsessively in the margins of her notebook. John will be here in... She glanced restlessly at her watch. An hour. I told him, maybe someday we'll see each other again. I guess it's someday. He had called out of the blue. I'm just going to be passing through, he said. And Charlie... Ah, oh, God, my throat. Ah. <sighs> Has it bothered to ask how he knew where she was? Of course, she, he wouldn't know. There was no reason not to meet him, and she found herself many, uh, eternally excited and filled with dread. Now, as she abs abs absolutely sketched regular rectangles, Rectangular forms along the bottom of her note paper. Her stomach jumped in little spams of nervous. It felt like a lifetime since she saw him. I saw last saw him. <laughs> Sometimes it felt like she'd seen him yesterday, as if the last year hasn't passed. But of course it had, and every hat. And everything had changed for Charlie once again. That May, the last, the night of her 18th birthday. Wait, how the fuck? Oh, right, 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 never mind. Of her 18th birthday, the dreams had begun. Charlie was long consumed to nightmares. The worst moment of her past forced up like bledle. As to twisted versions of memories already too terrible to recall. She shoved these dreams into the back of her mind in the morning and then sealed them away, knowing they would only breach it when night fall, fall, fell again. These dreams w were different. When she woke, she was... <laughs> oh God, I need to breathe again. Pacifically exhausted, not just drained but sore, her muscles weak, her hands were stiff and aching, aching, aching like they'd been clean, clenched into fists for hours. These new dreams didn't come every night, but when they did, they interrupted her regular nightmares and took them over. It didn't matter if she was running and screaming for her life or wandering amazingly through a dull mischief of the various place. She'd been all week. Suddenly from nowhere, she would sense him. Smith, 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 God damn, hold up. Sammy. Her lost twin brother. <laughs> what a sad day. Was near. She knew he was present the same way she knew that she was present. And whatever the dream was, it dropped away. People, places, lights, and sound. Now she has searching for him in the darkness, calling his name. He never answered. She would drop to her hands and knees, feeling her way through the dark, letting his presence guide her until she came to a barrier. It was smooth and cold, metal. She couldn't see it, but she hit it hard with one fist, and it echoed. Sammy? She would call, hitting harder. She stood reaching up to see if she could scale the thick surface, but it scree screeched up above her head. Damn it, let me read that part again. But it screeched up above her head. She beat her fists against the bird until they hurt. 
She screamed her brother's name until her throat was raw, like mine. <clears throat> until she fell to the floor and learned, leaned on the soil metal, pressing her cheeks to its cool surface and hoping for a whisper from the other side. I got friends on the other side. He was there. She knew it was... She knew it as surely as if he were a part of herself. Alright, you guys, I'm gonna stop it there because my throat really hurts and I have not... I don't like reading out loud because this shit kind of happens. But... Not to worry. There will be like a part two later somewhere, maybe. Anyways, hope you enjoy this. Bye!